Hey, what's up guys? My name is the channel and welcome to episode 81 of Game Programming. So, first things first, I stepped up the audio quality, hopefully. Um, I am using a completely different audio setup. This is usually the setup I use to record voice for um, either music or dialogue. Um, but I've decided to give it a shot on recording um, tutorials, which is kind of awkward because there's a lot of components here to set up in terms of hardware. But anyway, hopefully the quality is worth it um, because I think it's a lot better. So anyway, um, getting back to this, there is there will be a bit of echo because this room isn't soundproof, but um, it's not padded. But <laughs> hopefully it'll be all right. Let me know what you think though of the um, of the new stuff. So we're gonna talk about some pretty advanced and pixel perfect collision detection today. And the reason we're gonna do that is because we're gonna be simulating particle physics very very soon. We kind of are right now, but we're actually gonna step it up a notch and do bouncing off walls um, in every direction. Obviously, the problem with that is that if our collision detection isn't absolutely perfect, we're going to get a, a vast array of errors. Um, just errors in rounding, errors in everything. So this really does have to be absolutely perfect. And it's not right now, because what we've been going for right now, or so far in this series, is a good aesthetical uh, collision detection, which means that we want it to look nice. We want it to look perfectly. Um, look perfectly is not a word, but you know what I mean. We want it to look perfect. We want it to look okay. Okay, but in reality, the maths isn't actually perfect behind them. So today we're actually going to pretty much do an in-depth episode. Um, this is the kind of episode that should belong in an in-depth uh, series, but it is absolutely necessary that you guys realize this um, and that we change some of our collision methods uh, around a bit. So let's take a look at what we've got right now. Okay, some of this will change hopefully for the better. So what we've got right now is when this uh, projectile collides here, um, we actually grab, we actually get a bunch of particles exploding out of the wall. Um, obviously I set it to explode out of the right side. So if we go to the, um, left side, you can see they don't explode left. They still explode right. So they go into the wall and doesn't look nice. Okay. Obviously I'm aware of that. That was just to demonstrate what it would kind of look like once we added some kind of bouncing here. Now they aren't bouncing right now. Okay. All we're doing is we're setting, um, we're basically saying that if for some reason, this XA variable, which is the, uh, the the X direction of where we want to um, animate our next frame to, um, if that uh, if that direction is uh, negative, let's make it positive. That's what we're saying right now. So in other words, they cannot possibly go left these particles um, because we're overriding that. Now that's a very that's a pretty bad way of doing that, and the reason it's bad um, first and foremost is because it's it's situational. Right? There's only this, this only works in one situation. And we could do a bunch of if statements being like, okay, well, if we hit the wall from the right side. But the thing is, if we if we do that, we're gonna get a, a seriously a lot of problems because look at these walls. There is no way that we can handle all of these pre precise corners here. That's gonna be a nightmare to handle, which is why we actually need to implement some kind of physics here. Um so the first problem that we have is probably stems in um our wizard projectile class, which is actually open already. Um, now, I'm not going to touch the player's collision, okay? That's irrelevant, absolutely irrelevant right now. Um, player's collision to walls is only there for aesthetical reasons, okay? There is absolutely no simulation that needs to go on when a player collides with a wall. The only reason that, that this wall collision actually exists is because we want to stop players from getting out of the level or going, you know, getting out of corridors, whatever. We just want to stop him. We're not simulating anything. And because we're not simulating anything, there's no need to improve that collision. Okay, that's, I'm putting it blunt. Okay, there's actually no need to improve that collision. It works fine as, as it is right now. Feel free to improve it for yourself if you want, but this is usually here for aesthetical reasons. Now, sorry, I just hit the, <laughs> hit the microphone cable. Now, um, for our particle collision though, or let's just start with our projectile collision, that needs to be absolutely perfect. Now, why does it need to be perfect, okay? Why? The reason is we add a particle spawner at that location, at the location of where we actually collide. Now, the problem obviously is that if we collide and we you know, are already inside the wall just a fraction, we're gonna get an error because, well, we're not actually gonna get an error, but what's gonna happen is all those particles are gonna spawn already inside the wall and they're not going to be able to get out of the wall because they're already in there. Um, and really, we just want to fix that up a bit. So I'm going to uh, control click on this tile collision. If you're not using Eclipse, then I don't know how you do that. But I'm just going to go to the level class. Um, and in the level class, we, we do have a method that we made called tile collision. 
Now, all of this is quite situational with this times two minus 12 stuff. We wanna kinda of make this a universal, a universal method that we can use to make any entity collide with a tile, or rather check for a collision uh, in a tile. And the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna change around a lot of these parameters. Now, let's just take a look at what we need first, okay? What do we need to collide an entity with a, um, a tile? We need, uh, preferably, it's, um, well, essentially what we need, right, is it's X and Y uh, location, where it's going, and um, the size of it, which is what we seem to be declaring here. That's roughly what we need, okay? This X, A, and Y, A, they're never used separately. If you notice here, we only ever use them, in, use them together. We just add them together. So th in other words, what that tells me right now is that that can be done outside of this. So what we really need is we need an X coordinate, we need a Y coordinate, and we need a size. There's actually one more thing we need that I'm not gonna cover right now, but that's what we need. That's all we need, okay? So these two, if you just don't know that already, these two can both be accessed through, through, through an entity, okay? So if we just open our entity class, and I'm literally talking about our entity class, you can see we've got an integer here for X and Y. Now, we've got a double here for X and Y, and that's not, that doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, we seem to be overriding it and we do have doubles here, but um, that's okay. That's fine, that'll still work. Um, in fact, we probably don't exactly need to keep them as doubles um, when they get fed in. Uh, but because of the fact that sometimes we do have doubles, I'm not gonna probably use an entity. I am just gonna um, make uh, you, set, you feed in numbers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm still going to make sure that this is an integer, okay? Um, but I'm only gonna make X and Y. I'm not gonna make X, A, and Y, A. Um, so we've got X, Y, and a size, okay? That is a very, very universal method, okay? That can be used for anything. Um, now, let's clean this code up a bit. We don't need this anymore. All we need is X, and for here, all we need is Y, okay? Pretty simple. Uh, I think we've got an extra bracket somewhere because it's complaining. Maybe here? Yeah. Great, okay. So, at the moment, looking a lot cleaner. Um, Let's go back to wizard projectile and fix this little error here. I'm going to change x to be n to be x plus nx, and I'm going to change y to be y plus ny, which is of course our uh, translation vector. Um, and I need to cast them as an integer, so I'm going to cast them as an integer after they've been added together. That's probably going to be more precise. If not, we can change it at any time, of course. Um, so I'm going to add them together, then cast them to an integer, and that'll give me pretty much the pixel to which they want to advance to, these, these projectiles of ours. Um, now back in the level, um, this thing is is quite random here, and um, as in these numbers, okay? They're not actually, they're, they're just, again, aesthetical. We're kind of playing around with those numbers until we get something that looks okay. Now, we're gonna do it mathematically now. Um, uh, I'm not gonna draw you a diagram, because we're gonna be here for half an hour if I do, because this is quite complex. If you want to see this, Again, I'm raising my voice so you guys can hear me, or you who are already dozing off. Um, if you wanna see me explain this properly and actually draw you diagrams who you absolutely understand this, let me know. I'll make a separate video that's not part of this series that will cover this four corner collision detection in like about 30 minutes so that you get everything about it. Um, but all you need to know right now is that these are the four corners of a tile. A tile is square. Okay, anything that's rectangle, this four corner collision detection works for. In fact, it's probably the preferred method. Um, especially if there's no serious physics involved. And by serious physics, I mean like, uh, you know, squares colliding with circles or whatever. Um, and actually working out vectors to, to do with that. But um, what we need to do right now is we need, to, we need to calculate these four corners. Now, the way that we do this roughly is when, if we take C mod two, since C, is less than four, that's how many times we do it. We do it, we actually loop through the for loop four times, right? So for each time we loop, C is either zero, one, two, or three, right? Because if it's less than four, we get out of the loop. So if it's greater than four, we get out of the loop. If it's greater than or equal to four, we get out of the loop, because if it's less than four, we continue the loop. Um, so in other words, um, we get the values of C being zero, one, two, and three. Now, if the values of C are either zero or two, this will equal to zero. Okay, because we're modding it by two. Now, if C is one, one mod two is actually equal to one. 
and so is 3 mod 2. So what happens is if this is equal to zero, which is in the case when C is zero and two, I'm trying to explain this briefly, by the way, um, then we get zero here. And obviously zero multiplied by size is zero, okay? Um, and because of that, we get zero for here and, and for here. So all we're really doing is subtracting 12 from X. Now for the other ones, this is equal to one, one mod, sorry, this is equal to one. So we just get one times size. So what we're doing effectively by doing this is we're just having a way to either use this size or not. So we're, we're making ourselves a way to either add this size to the X or not. And by doing this, we're enabling us to check the other corner, the corner that's further away from the origin. Um, and that's roughly how it works, okay? So in order to fix this, we first of all need to change this to a subtraction. And all we need here is just the size. Let's get rid of this. Okay, that's the most basic form of this. All we're doing is if we're, we're currently in the for loop at the appropriate corner, we're just going to subtract the size of this rectangle. Or in other words, well, for this, the width, for this, the height. But because it's a tile collision and tiles are square, we don't need a separate width and height variables since they are equal to each other. So, and Y, of course, does the same thing, but for Y. Um, now, this is pretty basic. I am going to change this, uh, just a quick op op optimization here. Um, I'm going to change this divided by 16 to uh, right shift by 4. That's the same thing. does exactly the same thing because 2 to the power of 4 is equal to 16. Okay, this is a quick optimization. Most compilers probably do it for you, but it's probably... Um, I actually find this more readable, to be honest. Um, but anyway, the point is that um, we've got this nice equation here. Now, this is going to be pixel perfect, okay? As long as the size is the size of the object we're checking against. Now, this is where the interesting stuff comes in. If I open our folder here, let me just find it. Um, if I open our game programming and we go to rain and here we are. In resources, we have textures, of course, and we have our sheets and we have projectiles. Let's open up wizard.project.png uh, and we'll open it with uh, paint.net. So if we open this, what we see here is... Um, that this is drawn in the center, okay? Obviously, we'd be checking in the top left corner. That's obviously the origin. Um, this is in the center though. <laughs> That's a bit of a problem. It's not really, but it is a bit of a problem because collision won't occur here. Collision will occur here. Now, we need to offset it because of that. So we need to offset it five pixels to the right and four pixels downwards. So we just need to remember that. So what we need here because of that is an X offset and a Y offset. And what we're going to do is we're going to subtract this X offset here and we're going to subtract the Y offset in the Y. Okay. And this is pretty much going to give us a really, really precise collision detection method. Um, if we go back to wizard projectile, we'll have to add these values. Now the size is seven. Um, I'm kind of regretting that I closed paint on that, but if I open it right now and we'll just open um, the recent stuff that we're doing which is uh, wizard. Yep. Um, if, we if, we if we take a look at that, our size is, uh, as you can see, seven. So our width is seven pixels and our height is seven pixels. That's why I'm using size seven. Okay. Um, but what we also need to add right now is the offset. So five and four. Okay. Um, very, very simple. And let's take a look at what that looks like right now. So you can see that um, it's made pretty much no difference here. But what you should be able to see is, um, I think we may have offset it the wrong way though. So let's make sure that um, we do keep the offset uh, correct. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so it looks like it has to be plus. Um, but yeah, so what we're doing here is we're keeping the collision uh, ridiculously precise here. You can see that um, it's not making much of a difference because again, we did match it aesthetically, but right now it's actually hitting the tile and. That's what's kind of causing it to uh, stop. Um, so with that in mind, that is that is the collision method that we're going to use. Okay. So again, all you need to remember is you want to subtract C mod two times the size of your collision that you want to um, detect, and then you want to add an offset to it if if required. Okay. And that's for the x. Um, finally, you obviously want to divide it by the um, size of your tile so that you get it in. Uh, tile precision and you can actually get the relevant tile here and check if it's solid but um, the same thing happens for um, Y except with 
divided by two, of course, and using the y variable instead of x. Um, but that is going to give us the basis of the collision that we're actually going to use for our particles. Um, and in fact, what we're going to do, we're actually going to write our own collision uh, method here. We're not going to um, uh, actually use this one because we need more parameters than this. We actually need specific parameters such as the, the direction since we do want to um, create physics. But that is going to be the basis for um, precise collision detection uh, for our game, okay? So again, if you want me to demonstrate this maybe without a tile uh, thing, maybe write a quick game and just demonstrate this, contact, this concept with two rectangles and draw you diagrams, all that stuff for an in-depth episode, let me know, I'll gladly make that. Um, and because this is something that collision detection is something that people do not understand very well and it's something that you really should understand very well. Okay, so that is wrapping up episode 81 of game programming. One thing I want to mention, guys, is that um, I am quite, I'm actually quite busy right now in my life. Um, and because of that, making these game programming episodes is something I really want to do, but it's something I find hard to do at times. So I'm going to cut you guys a deal, okay? For every 100 likes that a video gets, and by video, I mean game programming video. So this one, for example, for every 100 likes that, that this video gets, I'm going to release an extra video of game programming. So in other words, if it's a Saturday and I wasn't planning to release an episode today, I will release one today. Okay. That's how it's going to work. So every 100 likes, so if there are 200 likes on this video, I'm going to release two episodes, 300 likes, three episodes, thousand likes, 10 episodes. Okay. Not even kidding. So that's going to be the deal that I'm cutting with you guys. Because likes, first of all, motivate me to do this. Honestly, if I see people liking my content, I'm like, dude, I want to make more. And second of all, because likes actually help my channel grow, which is something that is obviously a good thing. So um, that is episode 81 of Game Programming. If you did, hit that like button and I will make many more episodes to come. And let me know if you want that in-depth uh, in uh, series, or at least for this episode for Collision. Um, but other than that, guys, thanks for watching. Seriously. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Thank you.